संतोष हेलो यस सो आई थिंक आई एम रेडी टू स्टार्ट हेलो एवरीवन सो दिस दिस विल बी अ सीरीज ऑफ आई थिंक थ्री लेक्चर्स एंड इन दिस I think I'm going to talk about uh, more more or less basically the introduction to galaxies <laughs> and and see um, how far we can go uh, in this lectures. Like ultimately, aim is to understand the, the physics of, uh, of of stars like the you know, The, basically the motion of the stars in the galaxy and uh, which is which is basically a major part of this these sort of lectures on the like dynamics but before that i will i'll i'll walk you through the so the general like sort of introduction and what are the current uh, problems and uh, uh, what is interesting and what are what are different different problems that we uh, we should think about how to understand the today so i thought um these are like some of the topics could be um, covered so the general composition of a galaxy a classification then which is which is constituted the major part in, in studies of galaxy which is uh, on the morphology and then there are certain brightness profiles and the complex structures in this these galaxies and uh, then there is a um, there is a dynamics part which which can be um, sort of ensembled in under like you know, basically it's a, like a many body system uh, uh, there are there are billions of stars in galaxies as you notice um so how do these stars interact and uh, what is the the dynamics part in the galaxy so to begin with i um, go to first like now when as i said the general picture uh, which is um, the the hubble's extra ordinary contribution uh, in the in, in in terms of our understanding of galaxies because this is the uh, the hubble deep field um, uh, which is uh, Uh, it's an amazing like you no know, piece of work uh, uh, which tells us like basically how far uh, uh, in the early universe we can go and um, and how faint uh, galaxies that we can can discover uh, through this this powerful telescope um, so uh, so this is this this has been a uh, the major work because you can see when it was the hubble deep field is located in in the in the southern hemisphere okay you can see the point they are the fornax and redness um this is a basically a blank piece of sky okay a blank piece of sky uh, uh which is a typical requirement for for um, for creating uh, the field because there should not be any bright stars to contaminate uh, the faint structures that you want to see in the sky and then how will like you know the stay it for a longer longer period of time and produce this this image in a uh, different filters just uh, merge together to create this uh, colorful images of of the sky so this is uh, also this field is also like in some sense our window to to look into our the past so uh, how these galaxies were in the, in the in the very very early years and through this you can see um, uh, some general um, the, the images of the galaxies which are more or less like a point like objects um 
not always resolved due to the uh, limitation of the telescope. Um, and these are basically the, some of the Redshift 6, so Redshift 7 galaxies um, you, can, you can see. And many a times in the, 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 the trouble is, is to uh, identify these galaxies, detect these galaxies, which is, is a major task because uh, you need to understand the, the background noise very well. And uh, uh, the black that you see in, in the black pixels, uh, uh, which are basically the, the signal which is coming from a galaxy. And the uh, rest of the part is basically here you can see is a, the background. So one has to understand uh, very well the, the background noise characteristics. And, and then only we can talk about the, the detection of the signal. And then um, the, uh, it has not stopped. Like, so, so people have been exploring the Hubble Deep Field both on the on the on the southern hemisphere, which is the the Chandra Deep Field South, and also on the uh, northern hemisphere, the Chandra Deep Field North, uh, or the the Goods North and Goods South. Both the, uh, the both there is a piece of sky which is where the deep field is like there and people have been exploring using the HST like even how far we could go and this is one of the, uh, the one of the furthest known galaxy at Redshift 11.1 by Pascal Oish and this is how the galaxy looked like uh, it has a mass which is 100 times the mass of our own galaxy which is a Milky Way galaxy it's very small the Morphology is not very clear. So if I if I uh, want to show you uh, in in a, in a, at a glance the high redshift galaxies how it they look like you can see from 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 very far um, the redshift eleven galaxy and then there are redshift ten and as you come down there's a redshift two where the galaxies look very different like you know, looks like there are multiple clumps like you know, the, the blobs which is which is um, which is the general characteristic of the galaxy at, at those redshifts uh, redshift in a sense that uh, redshift zero is um, local universe and uh, redshift as you go higher and higher is the early universe and and uh, redshift two and uh, between one to two uh, is a the very very um, important uh, epoch in the, in the in the in the history of the universe uh, because um, at, at that epoch the uh, uh, cosmic star formation uh, so far had sort of taken a peak and then it sort of go down and this is where the redshift one and so this is that's uh, the, this is where the, the sort of cosmic star formation wave density is uh, peaked in the in the universe and at this this part the a lot of galaxies have those the clumps like not very very well um, sort of this is probably the galaxies are in the early phase of like an assembly. Okay. This is also like you no know, like can we talk about galaxy assembly. Okay. Now uh, as you come down to the lower and lower redshift, uh, which is in the local uh, universe, you can see the typical galaxies have uh, have uh, the sort of like arms, like which is a spiral structure kind of thing, and uh, you can see like you no know, more evolved um, structures, and uh, this is what we we want to understand. And then at the end, you can see this is the picture of our Milky Way, and where um, this is not a real picture of our Milky Way galaxy. But this is an artistic impression, but which contains all the details 
um, that 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 we know from from various pieces of information uh, which is put together, and that's the that's the picture of the Milky Way galaxy, which is much more like a mature big galaxy with a, a spiral mm -hmm. arm. You can you can you can see, and there is a like central structures and many more. There's a lot lots of like you know, details are available for the Milky Way. Um, the, when you talk about the spiral structure, I just thought to we'll show you this this um, set of um, images of a galaxy taken a, a, again in the HST near infrared window, which is like 160 filter, and you can see that at redshift 2.2, um, there is a there is all there is already like sort of one can see, but this is like what I wanted to show you that, that this spiral structure are, are, seems to be like you know, there even at redshift um, uh, around two. And, and that's the, uh, but, but we don't have, don't, don't have uh, many such um, example. Uh, so um, the question remains like, you know, for example, when you look at the spiral structure in the, in the Milky Way, image, the question is, when did the, the first spiral structure appear in a galaxy? Okay, is there an, is there an onset epoch? Okay, we, we don't know yet. So this is, this is, yeah, normal. we have to understand. So what it comes down to is that if you look at a typical high redshift galaxy, maybe not this far, but somewhere here, when the galaxies were like you know, probably ascending. So that's like your know, redshift around between one to two. And from one to two to redshift zero, if you look at this is how the galaxy looks like, a typical galaxy at redshift zero, which is uh, shown at the, the bottom. So now the main main problem, like you know, why we want to understand is what we want to understand is that how do this galaxy, which is, looks like an amorphous kind of galaxy where there is not structure, looks like in a very woolly. And how do they fall from, from, from that, that chip to all the way down to like no chip zero? We are almost all, already talking about almost like a 10 billion years of, of, of evolution, which is totally, totally unknown to us. We don't know there are how 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 do these this objects um, um, evolve towards like, this, this, this state. And uh, this, is a, this is a very, very challenging problem. And, and there has been many, many, you know, I'm, I'm showing you here also the sort of uh, many other like you know, galaxies from, from this epoch, okay? Between the chip one to two. Now, um, now, as you know, the redshift zero galaxy is like more mature and more evolved. So the the, the question was that um, how do they evolve? Okay. Now this is as I said, this is a, the, one of the most challenging task. Now, um, what astronomers do is that they they um, they try to tackle this problem either both from the observational point of view. And as well as from the uh, from the from the um, state of the art uh, numerical simulation point of view, and and both sides have been like you know, very very useful to 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 understand this 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 journey of a galaxy. And as you can see, there are there are several. Um, what we what, what what so so the question the, the main part is that. That in observations it is difficult. If you look at a redshift two galaxy and a redshift zero galaxy, we only know a galaxy once in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a one particular phase in the sky. So there is no way we can turn it around and look at a different types. That's not that's the luxury we don't have. Um, so what what one can do is like you know, go back to base with a this is an observation and then simulation and create a galaxy like this and start following the evolution down the line. So, and then one can 
one can see how to how to resemble maybe not as an individual galaxy of certain characteristics and then you see how they are as a class evolving so in this there are um, so it's, it's again like you know, this is very very uh, up to date in terms of like you know, the research we don't understand uh, lots and lots of things as you can see like uh, probably many things that we actually don't understand so but what we know is that there has been uh, a number of physical processes that that um, that sort of shape the galaxy one of them could be the gas accretion so the cold gas flows into the galaxy and as you know that the, the you heard of some basics that the, um, the dominant contribution of the matter is in the in the form of like you know, ga gas which is basically a neutral hydrogen gas and when the gas flows in the galaxy they they uh, condense make molecular hydrogen and then further condense and then form stars. So that's how the, the galaxy make their stars, which is the star formation history here I'm talking about. And then there could be like the minor mergers, like when the small galaxies will be like eaten up by the bigger one, and then that's how they grow. That could be another process. And then the star formation itself is a process because like each of these galaxies, when they are formed, they formed as a like sort of gas cloud collapse and how efficiently they form stars, what is the rate, and, um, and uh, what is the, how is the conversion from the neutral hydrogen to the molecular hydrogen. So number of stuff like you know, this, which will go into the understanding of the star culture, because that's the, uh, that's the one which is basically galaxies making stars on its own instead of you know, getting from somewhere else, which is through the minor margin. So there are two things in, in this case, like when people talk about what is called the in-situ star formation. And, and the, the other one is that you know, where you are accreting like you know, the stars from somewhere else through the through the uh, coalescence or or, or the, this minor merger process. Then there are like sort of as it as it these are the stuff like you know, the physical processes probably much more important in the, in the, in the very higher redshift. But as you climb down to this car, and as you go to the like, local and local universe, the galaxies are sort of more settled, okay? And then uh, the scenario is completely different. So then there are slow evolution, like interaction, um, sort of flyby interaction between galaxies. Those are the kind of stuff that becomes more and more important and um, let's so that's the that's the very very uh, like you know, in a in a in a nutshell like you know what we like to understand mm -hmm. what are the problems in in, in, in terms of in, in galaxy physics so um, so typical galaxy if you if you look they are basically made from stars which is the dominant so local galaxy like a Milky Way galaxy. So typically galaxy are made up made from the stars, then the gas, neutral hydrogen gas, molecular hydrogen gas, okay? And then there is the invisible stuff, which is like dark matter. And uh, I put a question here, but uh, that, that, that also another uh, a very, very um, integral part of a galaxy now, which is the supermassive, black hole at the center of the galaxy. So these are, these are the, the dominant contribution. So if you look at a typical galaxy, galaxy, for example, like our Milky Way, then uh, the stars are 90% of the stellar mass, okay? 90% of the, the, the like all baryonic mass of the, of the of the galaxy. Gas, a typical 10%. And then the, the total 
galaxy can have something called a dynamical mass, which is very different from the from the from the disparity. Okay, so in that case, the the dark matter comes into picture. Okay, which maybe we'll we'll get into so as you move on. So the the the, the typical in a, in, a, in a galaxy like Milky Way, the dark matter would be would be a factor of few to tens. Okay, which means uh, the the dark matter mass could be ten times the, the baryonic mass, or it could be few times the baryonic mass of the, of the of the galaxy, which is including in the stars and gas. Okay? So the dark matter, like we will vary ten times, tenfold, or few times than the, the few times ten times. The, Okay. So that's the that's the now the again there is again there is a there is a lots of lots of variations. The stars we know how to measure from an observation. Gas also we can measure from an observation. This is not a measurable quantity, but we infer it from the from the the motion of the stars or motion of the gas in the galaxy. Okay. So this is a model dependent term. And this is what we can, we can measure. It, it turns out that the, the stars and gas, which is, you can see that the gas to star fraction is like sort of like 10% of the total mass. So like 0 0.1 and 0.9, that ratio in some sense. Now, it seems like that also is not, um, not when I say typical galaxy, typical galaxy like a Milky Way, but in the local universe there are also like you know, different different type of galaxy. So there, this ratio varies as well. So it's a really really um, there is nothing like you know there's a one number you can code for 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 galaxies. But let's see like you know we can. So in a typical uh, the the galaxy I see if I have a diagram. Okay, let's like you know. I'll, I'll come down, come back to this part. What we know from observation. Okay, now if you look at like the typical like look at the local galaxies. So here, this is how it looks like the on the on the on the right side. This is called the elliptical galaxy, which looks like a blob of stars and almost like no features. Okay, it's like smooth structure, seems like smooth, apparently smooth structure. And then you go in the middle, this is like typical spiral galaxy with a spiral arm. At the center, there is a like bright object, which is called a bulge. And then you have an irregular galaxy where there is no apparent shape in the, in the galaxy. We don't know what it looks like. Okay, so, so uh, uh, we or in, in basically in some sense, we cannot assign a like particular shape into, into this irregular galaxy, hence like the name irregular. Okay, and typical size, if you look, the, the, the Milky Way galaxy has a stellar disk, um, which goes up to about 15 kiloparsec from the center. And elliptical galaxy can be like as small as 0.1 kiloparsec to about hundreds of kiloparsec, which is at the, the higher end is at the center of like many, uh, cluster of galaxies. Okay. And stellar disk in typical galaxies also like we have a few pars kiloparsec to tens of kiloparsec. For example, one of the largest known galaxy um, in, the, in the local universe, it's Melin 1, whose like, size of the galaxy is almost like about 90 par kiloparsec. Amazing, huge galaxy. Okay, compared to the Milky Way, which is like a 15 kiloparsec, it's like almost 10 times more, 10 times larger than the than the, than the Milky Way stellar. Now, what is the meaning of this size? Okay, so there are well-defined way to measure this 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 sizes. Basically, you you look at the distribution of the stars. And you can follow a radial profile 
and you see where the radial profile sort of meets the sky. That's the typical, which is a, which is a, um, which meets the surface brightness of the sky level. So that like, that's where the you can see the galaxy ends, but we don't know. We don't know whether the galaxy like extends farther. We, we don't have any idea. So if you, if you look at the stellar mass of these galaxies, like the mass of the stars in these galaxies, which I'm showing here. So Milky Way has attained to the 10 solar mass, which is like 10, 10 billion solar mass. And the typical smaller galaxy, dwarf galaxies, uh, if you have heard about them. So there are stars, stellar masses about 10 to the seven solar mass to 10 to the 8 solar mass. So uh, 10 million to 100 million solar mass. And then the, there are also uh, very tiny so like in a galaxy where the stars are basically like uh, 2,000 stellar mass. Typically, they are in the, in the, in the, in the Milky Way, in the, in the, in the surrounding, the ultra faint dwarf galaxies. So you can see, on the other hand, if you look at the CD galaxy, which is the the big elliptical galaxy at the center of our Milky Way, sorry, center of our galaxy cluster, um, they have mass of 10 to the 13 solar mass. So you can see, this is, the, 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 this is what I wanted to point out here, that the dynamic range is huge. Huge, and it's like, you know, almost 10 to the 10 orders, like 10 orders of like, you know, magnitude, like, you know, go, go from, from the faintest, like, you know, blue mass, galaxy to the high mass galaxy. So this is very important because, um, because uh, when, when uh, uh, we want to understand galaxy formation from a very first principle, uh, from through the, let's say the, the state of the art, like you know, hydro, uh, cosmological hydrodynamic simulation, <coughs> they should have a way to produce this, this, uh, the range of like you know, the objects, and often this is this, it's a, a very very difficult task. Okay, now if you if you look at those galaxies, then you know the there is a there is a, this famous diagram which is the Hubble Divaculus diagram, and on the upper this is like sort of a tuning fork diagram. So in the middle. Uh, on, the, on the left side, there is an E, which is elliptical galaxy, all the elliptical galaxies. On the right side, there are all spiral galaxies. Okay. There's a lot to understand from like, this simple diagram. Okay. And on the upper half, you see the spiral galaxy, which is um, have a circular center. Okay. The center is like circular. And whereas on the... the, the the, the lower arm has a, like center which is like sort of elongated, just like what I showed in the Milky Way. So, uh, so these are basically different morphological type of galaxy. And in the middle of the spiral and the uh, elliptical, there is something called a zero galaxy or the lenticular galaxy. Uh, uh, they are marked by a zero a, a zero b, like. Um, uh, like that, and then E and uh, these things. This E has a suffix uh, N, and N is nothing but N times 1 minus B over A. What is B and A? So if you look at a galaxy, elliptical galaxy in the sky, they will look like an ellipse. So you can fit an elliptical isoport to this, and this, there will be like major axis is B, sorry, major axis A and minor axis B and projection. And this is the B by A. So basically it's under ellipticity, okay? E, N. Okay. And then your spiral galaxy are uh, also, you can see there are various suffix here. So the bottom, well, like the, the, the lower half, you can see this is called the S, B, A, okay? S, B, C, sorry, S, B, B, S, B, C, okay? These are basically all the, uh, at the center there is a bar and they can be spiraled out. Okay. Now, um, so this is how the galaxy will look like. Okay. 
Now, if they are like the very closely, depending on how tightly these arms are, which is can be like SBA. And if they are open like this, like this, like open, so they are SBC. So from C to A, it tells you like you know, how the spiral arm is like you know, tightly wound or like open. So C means, the small C means they're open, the spiral arms. Okay, so that's the, that's the and then same thing uh, applies to the, the, the upper half of the tuning, tuning fog diagram where you can see that the, where the spiral arms are like you know, tightly wound, it means SB, SAA, SAA. Okay, so these are like you know, sort of SA and then SB galaxy. Okay, these are the difference. Okay, so there are the we we cannot like you now probably get into more details on that because it requires to understand now that what makes them like this. So there are dynamical way to like understand this. So so probably, but you can see that apart from this three type. The, the SB galaxy, which is the spiral with the bar, the spiral without the bar, and then elliptical galaxy. In between, there are um, lenticular galaxy where there is not lenticular galaxy. Are basically, one which when they lost their spiral arm, or maybe they no, we should not say lost their spiral arm. We just say that there is an absence of spiral arm in that. Okay, but they are not like an elliptical. They are not like like spiral because there is no spiral. Okay, they look like a much more smooth, but they are like flat galaxy. Okay, now if you look at um, the apart from this one, two, three, four class you see there are irregulars. This is sort of what local galaxy looks. Like. Now you can you can see this space from the galaxy zoom. They are like you know, an amazing work on on which is called the, the, under the, the umbrella of citizen science, you can actually, one, well, one can like you know, participate in this, this kind of program and classify galaxies or objects, anything that in the sky, there is a, uh, you can just like you know, Google it and you will find this, this stuff. And you can see there are many, many features here, like you know, starting with the, oh, this looks like a round or elongated. And then if not, then, like there is a flow chart possible. So one can actually go into this and uh, follow this and classify objects. So this is, a, this is a major, major task because why? Because compared to like now probably 30, 40 years ago, now we have like full sky almost available. There are billions of billions of galaxies. We know if you, if you, if you, if you, if you uh, just like you know, browse through, for example, um, you can you can go look at Aladdin's sky. Then you can go to the SDSS Sloan Digital Sky Server. For example, you can go to the BR14 Navigate. Okay, you can explore tons of galaxy with lots and lots of information that you can that, that will be available to you okay now this is how the when you do this classification and you have tons of like more galaxy you can see this how complex this can be like it's really really uh, can be can be really messy so the classification requires doesn't go into this simple like you know, steps like oh this is elliptical this is the the main problem is that within this spiral and not spiral, there are many, many other kind of galaxies. So I don't know go through this. But then the if you, if you ask why do you want to like you know get into this, first of all, in the first place. The 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 main main thing is is like you know, this is what I'm showing in terms of uh, in terms of uh, these two um, plots. Uh, one is showing the now, the, the galaxy classified. You see elliptical, you see like a spiral, and you see like spiral with, with a bar at the center. And then you see the irregular galaxy. If you go back in time, and you can also like you know, pick, as I said, like a different epochs, you can pick 
a, 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 a sample of galaxy and try to classify them, which is of course very hard. <clears throat> but if you can, then you want to put them on the Hubble, Hubble tuning form diagram or Hubble sequence. And you can see the difference is <coughs> that, that the, the upper part and the lower part, which is a six billion years ago, is not terribly different. Okay, it's not terribly different. So there are there are this this the, the most important part uh, thing is that if you look at the the number of irregular galaxy and you 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 end up classifying a lots and lots of irregular galaxy at the, the early epoch of galaxy. That's what I was talking about. Galaxies are mostly blobs, and so you don't know. There is no spiral structure. Like elongated differently, so the, all this, all this stuff. Like no, so definitely, like no. This, this tells you a lots and lots of stuff that to, that goes on from like now about eight to ten billion years ago and from now. So, <clears throat> so question is, when did the first Hubble sequence started forming? In other words, when the galaxies have started forming in terms of this class? It's B, S A. Right, like, uh, can we classify like you no know, problem? So this is a uh, very, very uh, uh, challenging because the, the it's it's a, it's a, it's a not challenging because we cannot do because it's it's a it's a challenging because our the instrumentation limitation because at high rate shift and lots of like you no know, things are not resolved properly. Okay, and you need a you need a like. Uh, uh, Powerful telescope to to, to uh, zoom into uh, a galaxy and try to like you know, see the detailed picture and even then only then probably one can talk about um, the the morphology but given that these are like you know, taken from some of the best telescopes HST uh, Hubble and like you know, the Spitzer we could like you know, see many things already is that is that six billion years ago. We don't think there were, or like you know, if you go a slight like you know, back in time, so Hubble sequence was not ready yet. Okay, lots and lots of galaxies were actually amorphous. Okay, so that's the now more or less like you now the, the morphology. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more of um, uh, details in the local galaxy. Okay, so uh, so. When I went to the Hubble tuning fork diagram, you can see there's a, another like you no know, sort of like names associated to this. Thing. These things maybe you will forget, but but I will try to like um, see if you look at typical Hubble sequence here. Um, S A, this S B, this is E, this is S zero. And if you look at these galaxies, okay, here, these are basically called the late type. Just, just consider that. This is early type. And of course, these are also early type, but it is. Between the late type and the elliptic early type galaxy, this gas fraction, like if you if you really think in terms of uh, the the fraction of the gas of the total baryonic mass, and to the, uh, the the stars, they really vary quite a bit. For example, the gas fraction goes down. Like if if you if you say a gas, it can be as high as the amount of stars in the galaxy, which is like you know, the star to gas ratio is one to one. This, it can go like really, really low, like no, less than even 0 0.1, less than 0 0.1, okay? So, which means that that this early type galaxy, which you see here, which is on the on the, on the right side of your, this Hubble diagram, those galaxies are actually gas rich. When you go from here to here, Early type in this kind of morphology, they are actually gas poor. Okay, naturally, 
uh, one can think about in the turn it around in this way that if you have a gas rich galaxy, they are likely to form more stars even at present day compared to the early, uh, early type galaxy where the gas fraction is itself is very low. Okay, so that's the that's that's the kind of variation. Let me assume. So there, there is a bit of a systematic here. Okay, systematic understanding in the sense that like we go from here to here, the gas fraction increases. So the gas fraction decreases. Okay, so that's what I wanted to so that I come back to this. Um, um, now, if you look at like the all the complex structures in the galaxy. So the, because first of all, why are we interested so much into looking at the galaxy? Because that's the only images that are available to us, okay? And you actually can uh, look into an enormous detail into this, these images because these images are often easily available from this SDSS server. So you can actually download. The first galaxy name is NGC 1300. The second one, I do not remember. It's a, like a bit of a far way bar galaxy. And you can see that all the galaxies have central elongated structure. That's the, okay, that's the like this, okay? And uh, sometimes inside the bar, there's another nuclear, um, smaller one. So a large fraction of the galaxies are of this kind. Not, 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 not with this, but there's just the bump. Okay. Milky Way is all of that, that kind. Then if you look at, for example, that's the image that I wanted to tell you, is that if you look at like a big structure, inside that there is also a, is a nuclear spiral and there's a nuclear bar, okay? So there are the ways to understand them, okay? But you can see that the, the this is like a very, very complex structures in, inside the, the galaxy, even the, the, the star stellar distribution, okay? And then, of course, you can look at uh, galaxies in the sky into a various projection. So if you look at the galaxy simply like this, so then it's called the phase on. So you can see this like phase on. And the same galaxy, if you look at an edge on, they look like this. this edge on. These are like two extreme projections, but it can be of any inclination with respect to you. Okay, uh, so there the, it's so what we see here, you can like you know, see like sort of like the bright light here, and then maybe like the you know, structure. Then you also see sort of like this will this will reflect here because this is a almost like a spherical structure, so it will reflect here like this. But if there is nothing, then it may just like this. So you can see some galaxies which are on the on the. Uh, on the bottom panel, like the, the last two galaxies on this, they are called a super thin galaxy, extremely thin galaxy, which means that there is no such central blobby structure, which is called the bulge of the galaxy. So this is this is quite like you know, amazing, like you know, the class of galaxy, which is called super thin. Um, now, so we are we are almost like you know, coming down from the the pictures and talking about them to see uh, things that we can measure. Okay, <clears throat> so here is a picture of a, a image of a galaxy, and it's seen in different wavelengths. Okay, so that's the so far we we did not. Talk about so we will start now with that. The way we see galaxy is, is through light. Right? The light is emitted by the stars. Okay. 
So um, whether now on, the, on Earth, on the, on, the, on the ground, we have a very small window uh, uh, available to us, which is called the visible window, something like around 4,000 angstrom to all the way up to 9,000 angstrom. So that's where the most of the ground-based optical telescope works. Okay, and 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 then of course, like you know, there are there are higher wavelengths as you go into the radio. There are um, India is like you know, very very um, um, active in in radio astronomy, and uh, uh, one can one can look at like you know, the gas through through the radio um, emission. But when you talk about the stars. There are only the optical telescopes which are available, so we can we can like uh, look at the, the the starlight in in optical window. But um, the stars, since it emits almost in all wavelength, is a very close to um, black body, not exactly. Okay, so it must be emitting in shorter wavelength and as well as in a higher wavelength. Um, uh, for example, a sun-like star would emit the, the, the peak of the black body would be somewhere around 5,500 angstrom. Um, so, so what we know is that since we this the this plot here, the intensity versus lambda. Okay, so there's a peak, okay, which is the then the peak. This is the black body curve, which is defined at a, at a given temperature of the star. Okay, um, uh, as I said, like uh, it's not exactly black body, but there is a there is a good understanding can be can be like you know gleaned from 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 this. Okay, now. What is what is important here is that is that the stars emit at all wavelength, okay, given a temperature t. If the temperature is higher, this peak shifts towards the lower side. Okay, if the temperature goes up, then the peak goes up, decreases. Okay, so it will it will shift towards the shorter wavelength side. Now that's where the, the key, which means there can be stars which are cold, they will emit more or less in the, in the higher wavelength side, and there are the stars which are hot, they will emit in the shorter wavelength side, particularly if, if the temperature goes like around 20,000 Kelvin, your peak may shift towards the, to, towards the UV, which is the ultraviolet window. And the ultraviolet window is not available on the, on the ground. So we need to go to the space to observe. And same are true for if you want to look at the X-rays. So these are the images of a same galaxy taken in different wavelength. You look at the infrared, then the optical, then go to the uh, UV, which is ultraviolet, you can see that the look of the galaxy, the way it looks, is a completely change from the from the optical to go to the UV, right? So, so which which means that um, when you look at the uh, galaxy in the optical, you see like you no know, very nice structures with the, with the with the star forming, like vision and everything. But when you go to the far ultraviolet, for example, so UV has to far and near UV. Okay, each goes from like around 1300 angstrom to around 1800 angstrom. Near UV goes from around 2000. And stone to all the way up to 3000 and so This is actually you can calculate for a mean wavelength of around let's say 1500 angstrom, what will be the corresponding temperature? Okay, for surface temperature of the star. Which means that those stars 
which are very, very hot, okay? They are very few in the galaxy, in the same galaxy. You can see these galaxies stuff forming, but very, very hot stars are very low in number. In other words, this, this FUV wavelength actually probes the, the, the very, very hot stars in, in, in general. Let's not go into the other complication, but this, they are very, very hot stars, which means that uh, they, are, they can be also very young, okay? Typically, um, well, like 150 mega year old or less. Okay, so that's the kind of age of the stars that we do, which means that when I'm looking in the far ultraviolet window, I'm actually probing galaxy in which stars are forming and they are at a, at a, at a very, very young age. So the recent star forming activity can be probed in different ways. In other words, just to summarize that when you look at galaxies into different, different wavelengths, each of them like, you know, carries a very valuable information. And you want to understand the full picture of a galaxy, you need to have entire wavelength sample. If you don't have sample, then you have, a, of course, like you know, the incomplete uh, uh, picture, right? And this is a very, very challenging problem when you go try to do that. So this can be done, let's say, for the local galaxy. Even for the local galaxy, some wavelengths are not available. But even you go to the higher and higher shift, we don't have all the wavelengths available. So which means that the, we don't have all the information that is required to understand the, the, the full picture of a galaxy. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here. And if there are questions, I will... Uh, I will try to answer. Else, we'll um, see tomorrow. I'll stop here. So there is one question from Muhammad Rehan. Can galaxies, galaxies contain more than one black hole and any galaxies without any black hole at present, at present at its center? So is that your question? So I do not know how to. Um, so this is the question that comes to Google uh, Dog. So yeah, the two answer is that yes, galaxies can have uh, more than one black hole at the center, and Andromeda is a very good example. is known to have probably two black holes or more. Okay, that's one. And then the other question is the can galaxies have without mm -hmm. black hole? But that is, I think, uh, left to be explored because there can be low mass black hole in a galaxy and we do not know it. Okay, so that's the... Is that okay? Is the um, the student can respond or okay, I don't know. How do you know? So there is another question from Sanjana Pati. Uh, how do we know what parameters to use when simulating the collision of Milky Way and Andromeda? How do you know? what parameters to use. Ah, this is another um, 
is a very very um, difficult question. So that is not only true for Andromeda and uh, um, and uh, Milky Way, but any galaxy. Let's say one and then another. Galaxy. What are the how do you know what parameters to use? How do you know? So we need to have the mass M1 and M2. So we need to know this like these parameters to which like you know, we can like you know, set it on a motion. Okay. And we need to know uh, at what is the initial impact parameter to like you know. Give. Okay. So that's the V the, the, the is the impact parameter. And um, and the galaxy can be um, can be going like this, like this, right? Or or uh, and also like when depending on the on the basically you need to set a full Euler angle configuration, the three angles in the space between the two two galaxy. So <coughs> I'll show a simple um, videos tomorrow. This um, another question from do gal so there's another question from Sanjana Patil. Do galaxies that are receiving from us faster than the speed of light disappear? No, no, no. No, that's not true. The galaxies don't don't, don't like to receive faster than the speed of light. Um, Yogesh Chavan. If galaxies are moving away from each other, then why are the Milky Way and the Milky coming towards each other? Um, that's the, the if the galaxies are going each other, that's the related to the expansion of the universe in general. But there can be local. Um, local at, uh, attract, attraction to each other because these are all like you know, the gravity. So local attraction can like you know, bring them closer to each other. For example, the Andromeda is coming to the Milky Way. Andromeda Milky Way are part of what is called the local group. Local group is going towards like you know, somewhere for the Virgo cluster and, and things like that. So, so there can be local over density. Okay, then as you can see that the universe is like you no know, very, very um, uh, clumpy. Okay, there are filaments and then there are like voids, there's nothing here. So the, the higher density regions will come close. Okay, but they're all everything is like you known an expanding like the you know, background. So that's the key of the expanding background. <laughs> Can a bird galaxy get converted to spiral one? Yes, um, they don't get just converted, but um, when when there is a bar and the, as it starts forming, and it it also like you know, the spiral lamp comes out at the end. But there is no like such thing like a conversion because the spiral arm, which comes out at the end of the bar, it could be short lived, which may not last longer. Okay. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you a few simulation on the interaction and on the evolution of the of, of, of this guy. There's a question, uh, question that Shekhar Shrikan asked. Okay. Now, Bharti, what shape of galaxy is wavelength dependent? Why shape of galaxy is wavelength dependent phenomenon? It is not, not, not a you know, shape of the galaxy is wavelength, wavelength dependent, but I think you did get it like no correct. The important part is that when I'm looking at different wavelength, they probe different physics, different phenomena in the galaxy. When I look at far ultraviolet, 
I am I am looking at only the young galaxies in the young stars in the galaxy. Now you would say that. Now we say that like there are because when you look at a galaxy, galaxy is made of stars which can be very old local galaxy, and in that some stars could be very young. So when you look at like far ultraviolet, you look at the only the young stars because they will be the one the emission will be. Um, um, emission will be received and you, you can you can filter out that. The same galaxy, if you look at it in the infrared, then you don't look at this star, but you are actually probing the old stars in the galaxy. Old stars are cold, they emit at the higher rate. Like that. So it's not that the shape are like wavelength dependent, but you are basically probing different things at the different uh, with a different wavelength. Ishan Sumi. How are distant galaxies identified? They appear in stars. The galaxies have some specific, uh, <coughs> specific characteristics. Um, how are distant galaxies identified? Yes. So this is what I was trying to uh, tell you in the in the course of that. Um, um, the Redshift 7 galaxy I was like, talking about. So galaxy do indicate uh, the high redshift galaxy may be like, like a point source. <coughs> so, but you can estimate the magnitude or the flux from here. Okay. And you can also calculate the, what is the noise in the surrounding, which is the background noise. Background noise it should be measurable from 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 the observation. Okay, so then you see if you how how strong is your flux uh, with respect to the background, and that can be done in terms of something called the signal to noise ratio. <laughs> so if the signal to noise ratio is strong enough, you say there is a detection. Okay, how the signal to noise ratio is calculated is basically the the flux uh, of the source of this object, whatever it could be, we don't know. They divided by the, the, the Poisson noise from the source fluctuation plus the background fluctuation. So we add it up. Okay. So that's the way we get that. Okay. Uh, excuse specific, me, char char specific characteristics when you talk about. The specific characteristics, also one of the characteristics should be that there should be spectra, which I did not talk about, but maybe we will eventually tomorrow. The spectra should be there. So there should be some emission lines, some absorption lines, like you no, know, which are which are required to, to, to understand. Okay. But more than that, I think I can we need a lengthy discussion on this. Is there someone speaking? Sir, so can you please explain what is this redshift to on what is this scale? Can you please describe that once again? Redshift what? Please tell me again. Yeah, this uh, you have noted redshift two, redshift seven, z is equal, to, right? Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, so can you please elaborate? Elaborate. So, so So the, the redshift like is a basically in terms of a, is a measure of a distance, let's say, to very sim very simple way. Okay. So the way we measure the redshift is through understanding the shift in the the the, the spectral line. Okay. <clears throat> so various transitions in hydrogen atom can produce like you no know, various emission line. For example, let's say from a from an object. In the sky, I um, measure um, the light and I disperse and I make a spectra and I, 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 I uh, measure, let's say, like the hydrogen alpha 6563 angstrom line, which is the uh, HL part, or it could be, for example, um, um, minor alpha line, which is like 1215.6 you know, angstrom. 
Okay, so these are like some of the strong lines that you see in the. Now, you say that like so in the in the in the, in the, in the image of the spectra, you see that like well, there are some lines here, some lines here. You compare this with the with the laboratory. So this is the observed, and the laboratory line. The same thing is here. So you 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 calculate what is called the delta lambda, the shift in the. So that shift is basically tells you like uh, the you, you can use now the Doppler uh, uh, effect. So uh, if this this the line is at a, at a, at a lab, laboratory line. In the lab frame, if it is like the, at a at a wavelength, at a wavelength which is like shorter than that, but then it appears in the observed in at a bit higher wavelength, then there is a uh, the redward shift. Okay, so that is basically one can use to measure the, the the using the Doppler formula. We can say that what is the receding velocity. So the red shift, in some sense, like you nowhere, we can see that how far away the relative. The, the distance between the between the because <laughs> once you know the receding velocity, <coughs> you can you can estimate the the redshift from there. Okay, and uh, uh, so basically it's a measure of like how far away the galaxy. Is. So redshift zero means uh, means local. So which is like you now uh, in our Milky Way project, we are in the Milky Way, <coughs> and then if if that ship is like another you know, one, two, or seven, they would be like you no know, far and farther away. Okay, so which means that they are going at a, the, the, the relative like you know, the velocity will be very very high. So the shift in the line could be like you know, very delta lambda could be very high, and when delta lambda is very high, the sitting velocity will be also very high. So it's basically in that way. This is how we measure the red shift, okay, of a galaxy. And basically, <coughs> you can think about in terms of a also distance, okay. The there is like relative distance, then it's like more because it's very far away. But there is a motion. The relative motion is basically is the one. So so from delta lambda you you estimate the uh, uh, receding velocity, which is used to measure the. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay. Um, should I? Uh, how did we work with the radio direction? It's it's a there is a there is a lot of like you no know, the history to it. Okay. The the question is, do we know that we are moving? Do we know there are <coughs> uh, because we are sitting at the sun, how do we know that we are we are um, going around the galaxy and what position they we are? So I don't know how to like you know, address these things um, be, because it's, there is a, like a lot of history to it. Um, so one can actually look at uh, from sun or from art. We can we can look at in the the, the 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 various like you know the you can go around and measure um, the motion of stars. At different, like you know, long it, different longitude. Okay, so which is like you know, in the in a, in a, in a if you imagine you are in a galaxy, in the Milky Way galaxy, we are at the some edge, and from there you look at it like every direction to you and measure the um, the motion of the stars. So those motion of the stars has been used to infer like sort of our. Um, how the sun is like you no know, is in the relative like you know, motion or not. So that's the that's how we could we could understand like you know, many things. There is also um, from sun to galactic center studies like you know, which tells us that like you know, how far away they are. So there are various pieces of information. It's not just the one. Okay, maybe this this is not. We're very specific, so I don't know. Two questions. Do you know 
dark matter is very elusive. Okay. And we have only recently observed the black hole. Oh, what is the last last question? I didn't, didn't get it. Do you think similarly there is a possibility? I, I don't. I is 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 good. Possibility of what? Um, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Uh, so, do you think there's similarly a possibility of us detecting the presence of dark matter through galactic collisions as well? The presence of dark matter through galactic collisions. Yes. So there is this like famous um, what is called the uh, bullet cluster, right? Which is two clusters of galaxy like sort of merging, so sort of colliding and passing through each other, and. <coughs> That's that has that's a very very standard thing. Yes, so one one one. You should you should look at the bullet cluster um, and type in Google. You see that uh, what you are asking. In a, in a galaxy scale, I do not know because uh, we don't have uh, because uh, because that's the, the one 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 tries to understand the difference in the the ionized gas. Versus the like you know, dark matter, they're two separate the dark matter the collide. So one can one can get some identification. Just type uh, the bullet cluster, you will you will get to sort of see like when people have used that to show that the evidence of dark matter as well. Why, okay, so thank you. Yeah. Why why is it that majority of galaxies involve in the spiral world galaxy. Um, this is also sort of the question is. Um, sorry. Uh, who is speaking? I'll read this question. Why is it that majority of galaxies evolve to spiral bar um, galaxies? Because um, the answer is again as usual that like, you know you get to hear that here yeah, we don't understand. Okay, but it turns out that that um, both bar and spiral structure. If present in a galaxy, they try to drive the galaxy in a state where they minimize the energy and angular moment. Okay. So they have, for example, if there is a spiral structure in a galaxy, it tries to like you know, take away some of the angular momentum and but throw it. Sorry? Understand who is this? So when you, when you so basically the, there is a the, the 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 spiral galaxies like the these galaxies has a lot of angular moment as you can see. I, I have not come to this, but I think we should, should go to the center of the galaxy. This bar spiral down. So when you have this kind of structure forms, they will. Take away the galaxy's angular momentum and throw it to the outside, maybe to the dark matter head. And then uh, the galaxy has less and less angular momentum, okay? And they work towards evolve, like you know, the, the, the big higher density at the center. So there is an evolutionary sense uh, associated to this, this, this um, that helps, like you know, the galaxy evolving, evolving. Towards this state, okay. Thank you. Yeah, but more details maybe in the in the third lecture. If I see that now, if the similar thing, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll touch upon this in the third. Okay. Thank you.
Does the tightness of the arms of this galaxy depend on the concentration of the dark matter? Uh, don't we don't know yet. I, I mean to say that it's it's apparently it does not because the tightness is related to like uh, sort of how it's a it's a, it's a shear. Okay, it's a shear which 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 basically um, lets the lets the um, the spiral arm sort of uh, come closer to each other. Um, so there are various kinds of like you know, shear in the galaxy, which means inner part will rotate faster, the outer part will rotate like slower, but something close to is, is related, to, related to this, but not exactly. So then the structures will type it get wound up very quickly. Okay. Now, now um, that is not all. Okay. That is not. Do, do you understand? So when when the, the inner part of the galaxy in the stars, like you now, if you look at the angular velocity, omega versus radius, they are high at the center and then more like this. Okay. So inner part rotates faster, outer part rotates slower. So the any structure, if you put in like you know, the spiral structure, this will go fast, it will go slow, it will go slow. So they get deformed. So it get like tight. It's like, it's like you make some rotation, like maybe in a bucket of water. So there has to be limit when I make this stop. Um, Santosh? Um, okay. I'll read to you. Sir. When do I have to stop? Because I cannot talk more. Sir, I had a lot. A lot. What, are, what do we do with this? Like, whose question is coming to the these things? Is, is everyone asking questions on this Google document? Or, or are there other others whose question I do not know? Is it Hello, side? sir. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had a question. What's your name? Sankarshan. Okay. Is your question coming to the uh, Google Doc? No, sir. I have uh, messaged you first sir, on the chat box. Chat box. So those are different. Yes, yeah, sir. Santosh? Santosh. So the chat um, questions are different. Google Doc questions are different. Yeah, I see. So then, uh, how do I like which one I give preference to? Okay, um, Sankarshan, you ask what is your question so that I go to the next question. Google. Uh, yeah, so I have a question that uh, I have read somewhere that when Andromeda and or Milky Way will collide, they will pass right through each other. Yes. Yes. So okay. is this That's correct? That's the or? simulation says. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, so they try to ask like, you know, whatever we teach here because I have a limited because otherwise it's a huge thing on you know, a subject, like you know, many things like you know, I'm not able to, I mean, it, without teaching or talking about right now, it will not be easy to answer because I need to give you a background. The true that the, the galaxy will collide um, and when they will collide, we wouldn't even know as, as, as spooky as that, okay? And that comes from the peak understanding that the, the stars don't collide, okay, I'll come to that. Any theoretical? Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. So, any theoretical? This is the same question, like now, Akshat. Yeah. Any understanding of why there are different shapes of galaxies? Um, no, I don't. Don't think we we, we know this very well. Okay. 
otherwise otherwise um, um there are there are some understanding like uh, but then you will ask the question you know, why is it so for example the, the elliptical galaxies are ellipsoid type and then round whereas the spiral galaxy is like sort of like flat so the two galaxy formation are two different in in one the galaxies are formed uh, the elliptical galaxies are are random motion supported okay like like a gas blob whereas in the spiral galaxy they are supported by the rotation against the gravitational collapse okay so that gives you the first thing which is called the one is rounder another is flatter let's let's come down to like you know this tomorrow or the after is sbc most stable shape zone is ba no i think is other way around is ba would be more stable because spiral arms are wound up and and and, and galaxy want to go into that state from open arm try to like no go close so that's the that's the evolutionary evolutionary sequence do all the bad galaxies have two spiral arm ah i think i think there are some cases some cases there are more than two spiral arm in fact the milky way is a good example of that there are i think four spiral arm in the milky way in the stars and six in gas like all together six if you if you consider gas and milky way is a bad galaxy okay so so they do have more than two spiral arms aparna can can elliptical galaxy consisting of pole star transform to spiral galaxy so the eyes in the stars on its own uh hardly no i don't think that's a that's a possibility because that would mean the the going to the anti evolutionary path in some sense which why anti evolutionary i'll explain it later okay because uh, the the system wants to um, go where there is um where there is more random motion rather than more systematic motion um surendra surendra uh, you talked about two low mass black holes in some galaxies really i don't remember uh, so will the star formation rate be higher or lower mm -hmm. so Two, um, I said two black holes. Someone asked this question because I don't think I went to the black hole today, and that's not my subject. Someone else will teach you. Um, I talked about the Andromeda galaxy may have more than one black hole, and um, we don't know yet whether there is a, any impact on the star formation because it depends on like you know, the complex um, understanding of how. Uh, uh, this black holes will will impact the interstellar medium, which is in the near vicinity. Okay, so that 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 I don't think I talked about today. Um. So, Mia Deep, um, why do galaxies have different shapes? I think that's the one I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Okay, please hold on there. I already tried to answer. Okay. Does it have to do with the stability? Yes. Um, yeah, so so many of my this thing can be um can be uh, studied from a few books, uh, which is um galaxies in the universe. by spark and galagher and then there are uh, bit higher level books which is the galactic dynamics by binney and tremain okay and then um, i do not know more recent books but if i find i'll tell you um chandra mauli it is your question why in ajan view 
some get a face like dustbin, some don't. Where is that? Everybody does that wrong. Or some get a sub type of things. The last last question is no. We don't know that, and not very likely that that all galaxies are elliptic. The the second question is that how galaxies have tidal tails? Um, because they interact. If they don't interact uh, with another galaxy, they don't have tidal uh, tails. I'll show you it tomorrow in the simulation. Tomorrow they have. Hold on. And. Uh, the dust lane, I, I didn't talk about dust lane by the way, but dust is a very, very uh, important in a, in a galaxy because the dust lanes are the lanes where, where um, it's very cold and they are concentrated, concentrated in the center. So dust lanes can be seen even when the galaxy is in phase on, because you see the trace. But in age on, sometimes the dust is settled in the, because dust is cold. So low velocity dispersion, okay? So they, they, are, they are sort of concentrated in the, in the middle plane of the galaxy. And then compared to that, if the dust were like you know, very, very like, you know, high velocity dispersion, they can be spread everywhere. So in age on view, if they're concentrated, you will you see it easily. So that's the that's the simple answer. Uh, is SBC galaxy most? No, I think I already said that SBA is the most stable. So is there any other question that you want to ask? You can go quickly in in in, in ten minutes, less than ten minutes. So also I'll stop. Someone can ask because I'm not sure. Um, sir, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Are you the one from the chat? Uh, yes. I'm just talking uh, because you asked me to. Ask yes, because what I want to know is that the first question is, what is what is rho SFR? Okay. So rho SFR means the star formation rate density, number of stars that forming per unit time, per unit uh, volume. Okay, that's the, that's the row SFR. So, okay, so, so go on. Yeah. yeah, sir. So I was asking, uh, like the shape of a galaxy, I'm sure is dependent on the activity of the black hole or the supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy as well, right? No, so, no. No, it's not. No, and I didn't even talk about this today. Why are you? See, I'm just wondering. Otherwise, it will be general entertainment for me, isn't it? Right, right. Because I'm not. I didn't even talk about black hole. I didn't even say anything on the black hole. Okay, I only said that the most galaxies may have black hole at the center. Okay, true. Now you can go into that, but I'm not like you know, very. Yeah, makes sense. All right. Let's ask like you no know, questions that we have already talked about. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Go on. Yeah. So my question. There are two questions. First is whatever uh, uh, there, there is something written on the board. The board is where you have written that Arabian sky is an SBSS. And then yes. there is some BR. I I don't understand what is BR after that. BR fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. BR fourteen. BR fourteen. Thing, in yeah, and I navigate. Uh, yeah, I understand, sir. I understand. Uh, okay. Another thing is that, yeah, sir. Another another thing is that we Tell are all, we are the Milky Way galaxy. We are we are actually inside the Milky Way galaxy. So yes, how of course. do we have, yeah? How do we have the picture of the Milky Way galaxy inside of having been inside the Milky Way galaxy? And uh, the picture uh, you have shown, and I have seen it in the internet also. There are several pictures of Milky Way galaxy as a spiral galaxy. But uh, in spite of being inside the Milky Way galaxy, how do you have that kind of a picture? That was my question. Ah, so so the, the, that that it is true that 
we cannot take out one galaxy picture, but the image that I showed you, that is not a real picture of the Milky Way taken from a telescope. That's uh, an that artistic impression. Yeah, yeah. So how, how do we visualize that kind of an impression? That is what I'm Oh, that kind of is because um, uh, there are like bits and pieces because we can look at this angle, this angle, this angle, like this. Then there are like, you know, Kobe satellite. Okay, so um, all those information came into picture so that like you know, we know this is what it looks like. Okay, so a real problem is that is that um, when you look at a galaxy, Milky Way galaxy, it's like this. We are sitting somewhere here. When you look through this, there is a huge dust, everything. So it, 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 if, if, if this were not like a dust, at the center there is a huge dust. So our, our light blocks it. So whichever angle you look like this. But you can go to here, you know, up to like here, but not exactly at the, like the center, but at some end. Okay. But uh, now, uh, because of the infrared uh, astronomy, uh, we can circumvent this like a dust quite a bit, and we can go through like you know, the look at like you know, some stars which are different class of stars. For example, this is the RGB stars and red giant brown stars and things. Very bright and very um, the standard luminosity of the star. So we look at those, okay, and with all those. You can get some picture of the of the uh, uh, idea, okay? Okay, this is why it is like that. So it's not like you know, just a one simple observation taken from here, taken from here, there, and no. It's a lot of dynamical understanding plus those based on some observation that we are able to like you know like you know get that picture. So I'm. Yes, so that's the in a, in a simple way I would say. So it's not the exact picture, but this is. And then also one can see the the in this like all the direction here around, which is all in terms of a uh, in terms of a uh, in a neutral hydrogen gas. That is another component. Now we know the uh, more like you know several million. Galaxy stars in the Milky Way through Gaia satellite. Okay, before that there were um, the Kobe. Before that there were uh, like Hipparchus. So all those, for example, we can read uh, about the, this Hipparchus, Gaia. There are many, many these kind of satellites like you know, which have uh, explored like you know, many, many stars around. And we have got some pictures out of that, like you no, know, which have some understanding and which makes us believe that we live in a sort of flat, like spiral galaxy. Okay, so there are maybe that question. Thank you, sir. Now I understand. Yeah, so I you need to read a little bit more, but also look at this contribution. These guys have made amazing stuff, like you no, know, to understand because we are the center, so we don't know. So we are only first. Where like you know 500 per sec size small volume available. Then with the Gaia we can go all the way up to like the here. It's like huge. Okay. Maybe in future we'll be all completing like now. Of course, apart from Gaia, there are other telescopes which directly looks into this in the infrared, and we can like you know, make many stars on the center. It's it's really complex, but I think and you can see this is like one thing, but then we have window like looking at this way, at this way, okay? And then basically you can make from here four quadrants. In each quadrant, you can get information and combine together based on the dynamics and you will know. So that's the picture. Okay, guys, like I need to stop. Um, is there any other? Hello, sir. Based on the topic that we talked about, otherwise, please don't. Yes, tell me. Uh, sir, I have one question regarding Hubble day diagram. 
uh, as per the diagram, uh, mm -hmm. we can say that all galaxies were elliptical in their earlier stage when they were formed or not? No, 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 no. So the diagram only says like this. E, S, A, S, B, and grid again. So it does not mean that the galaxy are going from here to here. It's just that you have a sample of galaxy and you want to classify them. So some are like this, some are like this, some are like this. We put it, this is the diagram. Okay. But elliptical galaxy did not go into the, uh, the spiral galaxy. That's not what it is. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, that's not what it is. Because their formation, their formation is totally different. Okay. Um, because one has very little angular momentum, one has the a lot of angular momentum. Okay, lot of angular momentum. I don't know how to this. It's a very little, much larger. It's a total total different. Random motion is very little, random motion is very high. I'll come to that. So so it's 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 it's, it's so they are very, very different. So it's not easy one to go from, but two spiral galaxies can merge together, they can form elliptical galaxy. That's a possibility. But that doesn't mean that all elliptical galaxy form through this way. Because that's where the challenge is. That's where the challenge is. Because you see one particular elliptical galaxy in the sky, now tell me how did it form? That's the, that's the challenge. Okay? Is there any, any question? On the, on the thing that they studied, or I'll stop right now. Yes, last. Sir, yes. Sir, is SBC galaxy more stable than SBA galaxy? You asked that, I have said already. Didn't I? I, I, I was answering to that. The, since the stable or un, unstable, it has to do with many things. It's not just one particular thing. So, this. When you say stability, stability, um, stability with respect to what? Uh, what is the sense of stability here? Do you know? So the gravitational wave. No, what is gravitational wave here? It's a spiral wave, spiral density wave, right? Between SBA and SBC, did I say about gravitational, gravitational wave? No, sir. So why are you talking about that? Because that's not the, and then the stability means, do, do you understand what is the meaning of stability, first of all? What is the sense of stability that you have to talk about? Like, did you think that when this to this will get a, one of them will break into pieces or things like that? Sir, internal collisions. Internal collisions. Internal collisions, like, Within the galaxy. Within the yes, galaxy. Sir. Internal collisions can happen because, uh, or actually maybe I'll show you that the, the, the stars actually don't collide ever. It's a, it's a collisionless system. They don't collide. And the stars which are in the spiral arm, also they don't collide. Okay, it's a very nice thing. It's almost like a traffic jam. On the, on the on 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 in a galaxy, so they are like uh, the over density where there is a spiral arm. So you can see like this traffic jam, and then it like you know goes away smoothly. And another some jam and like that. Like it's, it's a similar, but they don't collide. Okay, they don't collide. Okay, okay. Sir. yeah. I think I need to stop. You can ask me tomorrow. Okay, um, see you tomorrow.